Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of MC Eternal. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Hello. I wanted to start today's episode by doing a very important quality of life improvement and that is to manage my inventory. The problem is we have so many mods in this mod pack like I added blood magic obviously but we have roots, we have botania, we have tomcraft. My grass is gone. <laughs> anyway, the thing is, I have so many tools that I don't know where to put them. And this could be my third divination sigil, because I craft them, then I forget where they are. And I don't want to go through all the bags, because the thing is, I have a bag, which inside there are bags, which inside those bags, there are more bags. So, it's really bad. There is a mod in this mod pack called Simple Storage Networks. It's basically like an ME system, because you can manage inventories, but uh, it's not as complicated as this one. It's more like the inventory panel from Ender.io from 1.10, but the good thing about this thing is that it has a remote which gives you access from unlimited distances and across dimensions. It's expensive because it's going to need a nether star, but I think we can afford that. I think what we're going to need to craft first is some storage cables, the storage network master, the storage request table which is basically like your terminal, storage link cables, and obviously some chests. This room is actually chunk loaded and I think we can just put it here. Yeah, there's plenty of space. So we're going to put the chests over here, like so, and then we need to hook them up to the link cable, the storage one. And if I'm not wrong, then the storage network master goes in the center. So it should be connected. And then we connect everything to the storage request table. Like so. So if I drop something into the system, it will go to one of the chests. Yeah, it went into this one and we can just request it out. And of course, we're not going to go with normal chests. We are going to go with iron chests. And then we're going to upgrade it to gold. And obviously diamonds and that is a lot of storage very good and we should be able to drop everything inside and i can also clear all the bags so look how many items i was carrying on me <laughs> that's much better um so now it gets a little bit tricky we need to make the remote and i don't know how it works do i have to sync it oh okay that was easy. So generally, instead of carrying a million bags, I just have to carry this. This stupid thing that I did is actually the best decision that I have ever made, because I don't have to carry anything. If you have never tried doing this, the inventory management setup which I just did, I really recommend that you do this, because it's amazing. You don't have to carry any bags. I don't know how people live without this. And that personally is my honest question, because there are so many wrenches and stuff in the game and I don't know how people carry them. Am I the only one who has this problem? And by the way, what I'm trying to do here is to see if we add more devices, will this work any faster? I think it should. Well, it's not raining here, so I don't know. Oh, and by the way, a few episodes ago, someone was asking if you have a rift and you don't close it, what will happen? This. That is taint. It's not very good. It's also not very difficult to remove, but I've been just lazy. Does it go down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not that bad. I would say that if you add more devices, it actually works much faster. And instead of terraforming this entire area so that it would not rain, someone was suggesting to me, carry an umbrella. That's how it looks like. So, no, I'm not going to wear an umbrella because it looks weird. I thought I should do an exploration and it's not going so well. <laughs> so many monsters. And this one is a boss. Okay, I think we we'll first get rid of the dragon. Yes, apparently I'm alive. Good. Uh, I found a snow village and they have a guard. <laughs> okay, that, that was nice. From FTB interactions, I remember that this used to do something. Lotus. Oh, we'll give you some experience. Okay. So it's nothing special. Another one of those creatures. Since I increased their spawning rates, they're everywhere. <laughs> and they have 3500 health, so it's very difficult to kill them. Look, I'm barely doing any damage. After 45 million clicks, I think he's dead. You dug a nice hole. I was thinking let us play a little bit with the ICBM mod and try to make a few missiles. I have a very stupid idea of making a wither farm and trying to hit him with a missile, but I'm not sure if it's going to work, because uh, I'm not sure how accurate or how efficient the missiles are. So we need to do some missile testing. And some of you were suggesting that the missiles and rockets are against the Geneva Convention. I would like to remind you that I'm not a signatory to the Geneva Convention, so it does not apply to me. 
Uh -huh. So basically we have all the explosives on auto crafting and if you add one string it will be a grenade and if you add a rocket module it will be a missile. So let me craft a few items. If I'm not wrong we have to start with the launcher support frame and it requires a lapetron crystal which is not that bad. Also not that bad, okay. So do you have an ore dictionary problem or can you just craft it? No, you do not have an ore dictionary problem and that is good. After the support frame, we are also going to need the platform. So let's make that one as well, which is also not that bad. Oh, the tier three requires something which is bad. Oh, it's not that bad. Okay, I can do that. I personally hate every single recipe which requires a lapetron crystal or an energy crystal because your ME system is always confused. Whenever you're playing with IC2 or Tech Reborn in this case, uh, there is always a problem with the Lapitron crystals or the energy crystals that you have to craft. Your ME system gets confused and cannot craft them. I found a very stupid solution and that is whenever you want to set the pattern, just remove this one and add it manually and then it should work. I'm not sure if you guys also had the same problem or not, but I was thinking maybe it's useful for someone. Anyway, for missile testing, we go over there. This is the platform, this is the launcher, and this is the control panel. Very cool. And I believe you put the missiles by just right clicking. Ooh, <laughs> that is nice. And if I understand this correctly, you're also going to require RF, ready to launch. So we can specify the coordinates. Let's do it manually and then we go into lasers. Okay, I did find the coordinates, which I like, which will be that acacia tree over there. Hello. <laughs> and let us see if we can launch the missile. It's going. Holy. Uh, where is it going to land? I can't see it. I was off by a few blocks, but uh, it did work. Setting the coordinates manually is not very fun. So let us try to make the radar gun as well as the laser designator. Well, I think it's obvious that I have not played with this mod a lot, but I think I got the hang of this. So with the radar gun, you actually have to go to the location and select the coordinates. So we have GPS data saved. So if we give you another missile and right click with you, okay, you should have pasted the data. So can I launch you? Hopefully. Don't crash in my base. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. And it seems with the laser designator, you can do it from a distance. So we want to shoot them. Let's see if it works. You're off, right? Good, and fire. Please hit them, please hit them, please hit them, please, no. Yes! Oh, he's a boss, so he's not dying. A shame. Well, this is fun, but let us see how far can it go. Can we hit that mountain? Well, it's going to the correct direction. I'm a bat trying to chase a missile and yes, the range is good, really good. I found some vampire hunters. This should be fun. <laughs> yeah, the problem is it does not really kill them, but they have one health, that's good. Now that we know the range and now that we know that the missiles are effective, I made a very small wither chamber and we're going to try it on a wither. And I forgot to bring enough soul sand. Okay, we do have a wither, we run. The thing is, there's also a homing missile which you can set it to entities, but the problem is it's disabled, so I don't know how to craft it. But we're going to try different missiles. We start with conventional. Will you hit? It barely did any damage. So conventional missiles are not a very good solution. Why is there a missile here? I don't think chemical is going to make any difference, but let's try it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Nothing. So this one says exothermic missile. You thought the sun was hot. This should be fun. Holy. <laughs> that is big. Well, it's not exactly how I imagined it, but uh, it was pretty cool. <laughs> so it's not going to work on the wither. Obviously. Well, I did not find the store, but... Um, that's not going to work on the wither because the chamber will be broken anyways. So there is one more missile that I just want to see how it works. It says sonic missile. So the sonic missile does not seem to damage the reinforced obsidian that we have from there, which is our wither chamber. And I was thinking, maybe we launch that and see how it will affect the wither. This is going to be loud. So everything dies from fall damage. And obviously we have to see what the hypersonic one does. It's coming. Whoa, okay, <laughs> that was nice. Uh, 
it's not gonna work on the Wither. The ICBM mod is not incredibly useful for the purpose that I wanted to, but that does not mean that we cannot use it in a very cool way. I was actually thinking that we get raided often by raiders for our village over here, and they always spawn in very specific locations. For instance, let me find one of them. Yes, for instance, this is one of the places that they always spawn in order to attack the village. That's mine. Uh oh. So I was actually thinking that maybe we can have a command bunker somewhere and fire missiles at the locations that they're going to spawn during that night. Because it will give us an advanced notification. For instance, it will say they were attacked from northeast or southwest or whatever. And we just have to fire the missiles. Let's see how it goes. We need a bunker. I think I have found a suitable location within the vampire forest. The thing is, I don't like the vampire forest. It looks very weird. So we're going to terraform it into a savanna. It will not rain and it will look nicer. Uh, the thing is, this is a suitable location because the missiles have a trajectory and I don't want it to hit our own buildings, especially the tower. And I hope I'm correct. But the thing is, converting a vampire forest to a savanna apparently is going to require a lot of items. So I do have coolers and I also had to add something else. Yes, magic infuser, which requires lapis. And the cooler is either going to require water or ice. Water was easier and cheap so I thought we do this so the tank from Ender IO will fill in the bucket and I'm being taken to hell again let me go as I was saying the tank from Ender IO will fill in the bucket and we just set it to pull and push yeah exactly so when the bucket is full it will put it inside the cooler when it's empty it will take it out refill it and put it back again and now this guy should be working good also I do not think that it's going to change the cursed dirt as well because I don't like how it looks so we might have to do this yeah, probably. And we are also going to connect our bunker to our viaduct network. It's not a network, it's just one. But after this, it will be a network. Because it's more than one, you know. Why are they five creepers? They don't die. What's wrong with them? I was digging out our bunker and suddenly I found something. Uh, <laughs> what is that? Oh, is this the guy that we have to stab in the back? Hello. Are you alive? Okay, yes, he's alive and he's walking towards me. That's not very good. Yeah, I can't really stab him in the back That is the problem. Oh, yeah, okay I can he's actually not that difficult to kill because he has only 360 health and I do like 100 damage So we're fine Okay, now is our chance. Yeah, I think I have to do this like four times and then he's dead You don't happen to take fire damage. Do you? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, you do Nice Actually, I don't think so. <laughs> He's not taking any damage. If he drops something and it falls into the fire, it won't be very good. Over here, dude. I'm here. And he's dead. So what do you drop? Ooh, that's too big. Also, that's slightly disproportionate. What? 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 <laughs> How? We have to try this. Six damage, that's it? Okay. I'm done. What if I just hit you? 34. It's not the worst. When the raiders attack, they're going to spawn in four locations and they will only spawn in those locations. One of them is over here, which is right next to our base. So we're not going to use this one for demonstration. But the furthest away from our base is next to the river where I showed you previously. So that is going to be the site of our demonstration. The idea is we're going to have a missile silo and then we're going to have four sets of rockets. And whenever we find out which location they're going to spawn at, we're going to launch our missiles. And of course, we're going to have a proper silo with an actual door, which is synchronized with the launching of the missiles. But uh, for now, we have a lever because uh, we need to test this first. And here is the first set of missiles. I have already set in the coordinates for these missiles and hopefully they're going to cover a large area near the spawn place of the raiders near the river. We're going to give it a test and see if they will be clear and they will not hit the door. I'm actually scared. <laughs> Uh, let's fire it anyway. Okay. Yes, not very good. I was looking at the footage and it seems that one of the missiles actually hit here, which is very weird because I actually thought that these guys are going to first go up and then pathfind towards their target. So I don't know what happened, but uh, we're going to test it again. And let's hope this time it works. Please. Okay. We follow the... Why do I have such small wings? And we're earlier. Holy. Okay. They're gonna land over here. Yes. And oil doesn't burn. 
What happened to the rest? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we should go with a cheaper missile, because these ones are expensive. It seems that oil does burn. No, it's not the oil, it's that idiot. And this is why we do several tests, because obviously something is going to go wrong. It's on... <laughs> okay, we have to follow them. I forgot to turn off the lever, but it should hit all the targets. Hopefully, yes. That is good. That is also good, and that is also good. I'm very happy. Sometimes an idea is so stupid that even I'm confused why it worked. We did manage to take out a few of them and the reason that we missed most of them was because of this stupid oil thing which we have to start removing next episode. But that was a good demonstration, I have to adjust the missiles and it will work. Also I had to make a few changes over here, the missiles are no longer underground, well they are underground and they will be covered by the silo doors but they're not that deep because our bunker is down there and they're up here. And the way that this is going to work is that I have hooked them up to power, I have hooked them up to an ender chest which is hooked up to our ME system which is producing the missiles and we're providing them with the rockets and we're going to give them a redstone signal whenever we want to fire them. Also this got me confused for a while, apparently if you want to load the rocket automatically using conduits, you have to hook it up to the platform and not the controller. I did not know that. Anyway, we have 16 missiles and they are divided into 4 groups and each group will target an area which the raiders are going to spawn. Uh, the thing is, our control room is going to be down here. The idea is that we are going to have screens from RF tools and each one of them will have a button module which will control one of the missile groups. And this way I can launch them from here. If we want to give a wireless redstone signal, we are going to need a redstone receiver from RF tools. We just put it down and it will connect to the conduit. And if we hold shift and right click with a button module, they will be synced. And if we put the button module in a screen, which has power, yes, it is connected. So whenever we press the button, the missiles will be launched. I had a slight issue with wireless redstone and instead of solving that, I thought it's only five blocks. I'll make cables, it's fine. And the only thing that we have to do is to just connect the conduit here, put it on input green, and then just put a button. Now it's active. For the moment I'm just going to use signs because I don't have anything on me but later on we're going to change it with another screen so that we will know which button is which direction. I did bring some decorative blocks from engineers decor which we're going to use but I also brought something from computer craft. The idea is that we're going to try and set up a hologram map of our village in our bunker and for that we're going to need to set up a computer from open computers so we're going to have a case and then we're going to have a monitor as well as a power converter so that we can provide them with power and the flux point goes down there. We are also going to need a keyboard which can go anywhere and then we're going to need to fill in the inside of our case. So we're going to have a CPU, RAM, internet card, hard drive, graphics card and the BIOS. Then we're going to need the operating system for open computers and it's relatively easy to craft. You just make a floppy disk and the open computers manual. We put it in and we can turn it on. And in order to install the operating system, we just have to type install. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> it's making noises. It's so funny. <laughs> and now it wants to restart. Okay. <laughs> this is so nice. Now that we have an operating system, we can take out this disk and then use OPPM, which you actually make it from a cobweb. It's not a cobweb, but you know. Now that we have the OPPM disk, we can install the program. Yes, please. I think it actually downloads it from the internet, so this is why you need an internet card. Anyway, there are a bunch of programs here which we need to install, and I think one of them was called Geo2Holo? Let's see if I'm correct. Yes, I was correct. This program is for connecting the geolizer to the hologram. I made some open computer cables and we're going to put the hologram on top because it can only be powered and connected from the bottom. You cannot connect from the sides. It's weird, I know. And then we're going to need the geolizer itself. So this guy will scan an area around it and I think if we are closer to the village, we will get a better image. So let's go that way a bit. And we are out of cables. So you go here. And then how do I get back? Yeah, I can fly. <laughs> I'm a bat. I can fit through anything. So if we run the program, which you just type geo 2 holo and it should run it, I hope, we get a 3D image of our village. It's still scanning, so it could take some time. This is so cool. <laughs> I love this. Maybe I should have gone a little bit higher because we can see the viaduct. Yeah, maybe I should have done this at a higher Y level because we're just seeing the rocks, not the village. Not much, but I think it's fine, we can adjust it later on. Also safety is very important to us and we should know where the exit is. We should also know that if we press these buttons, things can go wrong. I also brought some chiseled blocks, some barrels, some TNT and maybe we can have a drum, I don't know, for decoration. I also made some edge lights from engineers decor and they are really cool. Just put them here 
and they give a lot of light. Then I was thinking since this is a bunker, we should probably have a few pipes. So I did bring some pipes, obviously. And how do we want to do this? Yes, that actually looks nice. Maybe we should also have a toilet, I don't know. For the decorations, I have to work on it a little bit more and I think I will do that on my own. But anyway, we are going to expand on this bunker and maybe we will add a nuclear silo to it as well. It would be fun. Because um, I cannot detonate a nuclear bomb, I'll die myself. <laughs> We need a missile. I was also hoping that today we would be able to spend some time on Bewitchment because I think it's a really cool mod and I was trying to make a structure for it over here, which I know it looks weird, <laughs> it's, it's not complete, but I don't think I will have enough time to complete it today. So maybe we do it next episode. I don't know. But next episode, our first priority is to get more RF. So we need to get oil because we don't have that much power. Just a very small point before we finish the episode. A few episodes ago, I tried to remove my warp by taking a bath and using soaps and it was not working. The thing is, if you want to use the soap, you should not wear something which gives you warp. So I removed it and now the warp is gone and I'm no longer that insane. I still have a lot of warp, but it's not that bad. Anyway, guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. And before I forget, some of you guys were asking me what happened to Project Ozone. The thing is, uh, some of the mods got removed and some of the recipes have been changed and the episode that I spent the entire weekend trying to record is now worthless. So I can't upload it and I have to load a backup, maybe wait for another update. So. It's going to take some time. Uh, th there is a problem with Curse and one of the mod authors. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.